Welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Ollie Hayes and today I'm bringing my preview for Everton versus Newcastle United on Saturday at Goodison Park at 5.30pm. So let's get straight into it. We'll start with Everton. Uh, we come off the back of a, a very big win against Crystal Palace last weekend at Goodison um, last Saturday. It was great to get that first three points on the board for the season and hopefully we can use that now as a springboard to kick on. But definitely think you know that if we, we play like we did in that second half against Crystal Palace and, and look to use that as a springboard... I think there's, there's no reason why we can't take that momentum into the Newcastle game and, and take the game to them. But as I said, it's, it's a huge boost for morale. Um, but, you know, my, my one worry with with us and how we played last weekend, I think if we if we go into the game playing like we did in that first half against Crystal Palace, obviously no disrespect to Palace, they are a decent side in their own right. Obviously they, they do have players that do have the ability to be clinical in front of goal, but... I think you know a team like Newcastle are very a vastly different to Crystal Palace. If they come to Goodison and, and play the way they did, um, and we play the way we did in that first half, you know we could be looking at three, four nil down, you know even before half time. So I think we do have to be mindful. We have to be, you know, very quick out the blocks to to get at Newcastle and, and try and nullify their threats. But that being said, I think if we do play the way we did in that first half against Crystal Palace, I, I don't think we're you know going to be looking at this game coming out with a, a positive result. But that being said, I think. If, as I said before, the the performance in the in the second half was was very good. It was much improved. I was you know proud of the way that we turned around a, a deficit that we we held at half time. Obviously, two fantastic goals from Dwight McNeil, a very good finish from the outside of the box, and then very good finish with his left foot to, towards the far post there um, of the Gladys Street end. So I think if you can replicate that, it'd be, be definitely positive. But take the game to them. If if we sit back and and let Newcastle have all the ball and you know. Give the, the likes of Bruno Guimaraes and and players like that, and even Anthony Gordon. If you give the, them the ball at their feet, you know they're going to pick you apart. They have the quality to do so. They are a very good side in that right. So, I, I think you know we do have to take the games, and we have to be right in their face, high pressing. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that Sean Dyche should change his tactics too much, and you know completely go away from his principles and what he wants to do. But I think he, he does have to adapt in this game because, as I said before, Newcastle are a top side. They will just pick you apart if they can do because they've got the quality to do so. So. You know, if we sit back and, and let them come on to us, I, I do fear that you know it could be a very long afternoon and we, we could be staring a defeat in the face. But that being said, um, you know, Newcastle this season, they, they haven't been too good. They they do seem to be creeping back to where they were, you know, two seasons ago where they, they got that uh, Champions League football um under Eddie Howe. Obviously, they had a little bit of a lull last season where they were maybe expecting to get back into Europe, maybe not the Champions League, but you know, Conference League or Europa League, and they were they were unlucky to miss out. But for a, I think it was a Manchester United Cup win in the FA Cup that managed to keep them out of Europe. But that being said, they they do have a lot of quality in the team, as I said before. Um, so, you know, you, you do worry that they do have too much quality for us. That's that's the one thing, you know, springing in my mind. But that being said, if you look at the, the game that Newcastle had against Fulham, for example, they, they went to Craven Cottage and they came away and, and got pretty badly beaten. So I think, you know, if we, we try and play the way Fulham did and try and come onto them and, and be positive and, and high press, and I think there's, there's no reason why we, we can't get a result and we can't get a victory against Newcastle. But our form against Newcastle is not too bad. It's okay. Um, a win and a draw last season, obviously that, that fantastic night at Goodison just before Christmas, um, getting the 3-0 victory against Newcastle was very interesting and, and a very good evening. Beto getting on the score sheet as well as Abdelad Corey and, and, and Dwight McNeil. So it was a very good evening. And then away from home, getting a point, a, a valuable point. I think it was Dominic Calvert-Lewin's first goal in a, in a number of months to to break his drought so you know you look at the 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 memories of last season against Newcastle it does you know bode quite well as there's quite fond memories from those two games and you know surprisingly our form at Goodison is quite strong it's still quite decent even if you factor in the the two defeats this season against Bournemouth and Brighton that we've suffered to, towards the start of this season we have only lost two games in the last eight games at Goodison so you know that that includes a, a very memorable mid-side derby win but also there's a there's a few good victories in there as well so I think if if we can take that form and, and take that mentality that Goodison still does have a very decent record and is still somewhat a fortress as it, that it as it was towards the back end of last season, I'm I'm hoping that we can you know take that and, and use that and use the boost of morale from the the Crystal Palace game and go into this game and try and get a result. But that being said, um, you know as I said before, Newcastle do seem to be creeping back up the table. They are they do sit seventh now and they they come off a very good point against Manchester City, which they got um in the in the lunchtime kickoff last weekend on on Saturday. Um, against Manchester City. So, you know, they are in decent form. They are a good side, as I've said before. They do have a lot of quality. Um, in terms of how we'll line up, obviously I'll be looking at our start 11 very fondly um, after three o'clock tomorrow. Um, I think we'll likely be unchanged from this game. I think maybe 
Sean Dyche might look to drop um, Jesper Lindstrom and, and play Jack Harrison. I know, you know, Jesper Lindstrom didn't have the greatest of hearts against Crystal Palace. I think he is still, you know, relatively new to the to the side. He's still trying to play his trade. He's still trying to, you know, bed in in England. It does take time, especially coming from Serie A and also the Bundesliga. They are notoriously quite slower leagues than the Premier League. So if you're looking at Jesper Lindstrom, it might take him a little bit more time to, to get up to speed of the Premier League. But that being said, I do think he can offer the, the team something. But maybe against Newcastle, Sean Dyche will look for a little bit more defensive solidity. I think Jack Harrison probably offers you a little bit more than that. Um so I think he might look to change Jesper Lindstrom for Jack Harrison and maybe look to use Lindstrom as a, a later impact sub in the game. But that's no disrespect to Lindstrom. I think he, he had a, a decent game. I think it might just be a little tweak of the system and, and Jack Harrison might be favoured in that position. But, you know, if you're looking at our danger man, it's probably going to be Dwight McNeil, isn't it? I think we're probably going to have to single Dwight McNeil out as our biggest threat to Newcastle. Um, hopefully he can, can continue that rich vein of form that he is on at the moment. Um, obviously he's, he's got a couple of goals against Crystal Palace which he can hopefully use as a spring ball but he got the goal against Aston Villa and also a good assist against Aston Villa so I think for September his stats were three goals and one assist so you know, that's definitely a rich vein of form hopefully he can continue that and you know score in this fixture as he did last season a, a great goal with his left foot from the edge of the box which put us 1-0 up against Newcastle last season fingers crossed he can replicate that and maybe use that as a little bit of motivation to, to try and beat them again but no, definitely. Dwight McNeil will probably be used as our talisman, but also Ilya Minajai. I think he's crucial. You know, in, in a game where we might not get a lot of chances and we might not get a lot going forward, I think using a player like Ilya Minajai, just the, the flair and, and the pace and the power that he has in his running, I think that's going to be really crucial to us on Saturday because, you know, as I said before, we're not going to get a lot of chances. Trying to carve an opening and using his little bit of magic, I think that's going to be a big thing for us. So fingers crossed we can get him on the ball as much as possible and, and try and get balls into be, into his feet and, and in behind him and hopefully he can work his magic and create us some chances. But if we look at Newcastle's side of things, um, obviously I think the, the rumours this week are swirling. I think Alexander Izak is going to be out for the fixture. I think he's out until the middle of October, maybe after the international break. So um, yeah, he will be out of this fixture and he, he won't be playing. But if you look at Newcastle's side, I think I, I mentioned them before, Anthony Gordon, I think he's... Obviously, ex Everton, there there is a little bit of needle there between our fans and, and Anthony Gordon. So I'm I'm hoping he doesn't get on the score sheet for for our sake. But also, I do you know I can recognise that he is a decent player, and he, he does play to Newcastle strengths and as a squad very well. So I think he will be quite difficult to keep a hold of. But yeah, as I said before. And Anthony Gordon will be used as Newcastle's talisman. I think he played up front against Manchester City as the, the sole number nine in, in Alexander Isaac's um, absence. So I think Anthony Gordon will probably be used up there again as a striker. But also you look at the players like Bruno Gomares. I think he's a fantastic player, especially on the ball. You know, the, the way he can unlock teams. As I said before, if we sit off Newcastle and give them the ball and, and give likes of, of Gordon and Gimaraes the ball, I think we will be in trouble because they have such good quality. So we all have to look at maybe Idrissa Garner Gay or James Garner or whoever starts in that in that side. Um, you know, even Oral Mangala. We we need to look at them as as a high pressing opportunity and to try and get uh, Gimaraes off the ball. But that being said, I do think they are probably going to be Newcastle's talisman on on Saturday, and they will definitely be looking to play all all roads through them. But that's really it for for my preview. I'm going to give you a prediction now. Um, obviously, I've tried to be as positive as I can in, in this pre preview. Um, as I said before, Newcastle are a top side, but we do come off the very um, positive result last weekend. So I think I'm going to go with 1-1 for this game. I think we're going to maybe get a point and maybe you know look to continue this unbeaten streak that we've got in the league. Obviously, um, Leicester away where we got the point and then also beating Crystal Palace last weekend. Hopefully we get a point this weekend or even three points, but my prediction is going to be 1-1 for this game. But make sure you let me know your predictions in the comments. Uh, let me know if I've missed anything out, if you think there's going to be a, another talisman in the Everton team that which we're going to use, or is there another danger man on the Newcastle side of things that you know we should be looking out for? But that is all for my thoughts and my preview for, for today um, on Everton against Newcastle. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe.